third was taken from the track Thorns by Daniel Adam from his album Where the Waves Meet. If you want to hear more of his great music, then check out the link in the description of this video. Hello and welcome to the inaugural Transatlantic Countdown to Cyberpunk podcast. My name is Kindred and I'm a writer. And I'm Bad Juju and I'm an illustrator. So what this is about is essentially we're longtime fans of the cyberpunk genre and we're shamelessly cashing in on the countdown to the much anticipated CD Projekt Red Cyberpunk 2077 game. Uh, and the whole point about this is just if you're new to this genre, we're going to go through films, by commentaries or discussions and music and art and comic books, etc., etc. Everything to do with cyberpunk we're covering. Um, so we decided to kick off our channel with the again shamelessly cashing in on Cyberpunk twenty seven seven, um, what we're calling the Keanu trilogy. Uh, so we thought we'd go through chronologically three of Keanu Reeves's cyberpunk based films, starting with the much maligned and we both think slightly unfairly so Johnny Mnemonic. So. If you have your copy with you, get ready to press play now. Okay, so, 1995. 90s were kind of weird for the cyberpunk genre. Uh, you had a few here and there. It's kind of, I feel it was a genre that never really dominated the box office that much. No, it was uh, more action oh. films. It's, it's a bit sporadic. We've got text crawl to fill in the whole second decade of the 21st century. Corporations rule, because of course they do. The world is threatened by a new they plague. they got to do an iced tea voice. The world is threatened by a new plague. There NAS, nerve attenuation syndrome, fatal, epidemic, is causing guilt cure unknown. The corporations are opposed by the low techs, the resistance movement, risen from the streets, hackers. Dear Paris, grill fighters in the info wars. Coco, get in my bitch. The corporations <laughs> defend themselves. Oh, they hire the Yakuza, the most powerful Volkram <laughs> syndicates. They sheath their dead in black ass, lethal viruses. Oh, when to burn the brains of the intruders, but the low techs wait in their strongholds in the old city cores, like rats in the walls of the world. The most valuable information must sometimes be in interested to mnemonic couriers, elite agents who smuggle data oh. in wet wire brain implants, motherfucker. There oh, you go. God. With apologies to Coco, <laughs> her daughter, and their two dogs. <laughs> uh, China Monarch. Yay! So, this is a Robert Longo film, Artist and Sculpture. He was originally, I believe, wanting to make this a uh, $1.5 million art house film based on, of course, the William Gibson short story originally published in 1981 in Omni magazine. And then later collected as part of the Blood Out, so Burning Chrome um, short story collection. So it's pretty amazing taking a chance on just a painter, sculptor. Well, that wouldn't happen nowadays. No, could you imagine? I just rock up to a Hollywood studio. I'm like, I have an idea for a film. This is what it's going to be like, and they go, "Sure, here's a here's a couple of million dollars." Well, of course, like Sony end up like going, eh, we've got a few more ideas, and here's thirty million dollars. And I think Robert Longo, like uh, notoriously, said that he'd have a. Well, I'm paraphrasing here, but he didn't have a fucking clue what he was doing. <laughs> and I think that scale, because you know, 1995, 30 million dollars wasn't a load of money, but it was not a small amount. Still a lot of money, considering. Hmm. God bless him, Keanu. I think was he nominated for a Razzie or Golden Razzie or something, something like that for his performance. Would this be the first time? <laughs> I don't know. I haven't done my research that thoroughly. Yeah, you know, see, it's it's fashionable now because like he, he's he's cool and like old John Wick and shit like that. But you know, I've always I've always had a soft spot for him, and I think I was. What was the first thing you saw him in? I think it was my Bill and Ted. I'm trying to think of the yeah. first thing. Is that yours? The yeah. first time you saw him? 
you kind of had that, that in point uh, break in point break yeah uh, udo kia classic um character german character actor often seen in things like uber bowl films at <laughs> least said about those the better jesus christ Uh, when was the last time I saw him? Fucking hell. He's trying to get his teeth pulled out by Stephen Dorff. Why? The last time I saw him was in Ace Ventura. Was Udo here in Ace Ventura? I think he was. In one of them. I can't remember. I could be wrong. You could edit that out. <laughs> I can't edit it out. <laughs> and more to the point, I won't edit it out. Even <laughs> if we find that out. Partly because I'm vindictive, partly because I'm lazy. <laughs> you choose. So, uh, uh, no, I always found it quite distracting that he just shaved his hair off there to like parallel to the tops of his ears. Well, that's the uh, thing. I've seen that in a lot of sci fi movies that they think a futuristic haircut is if you <laughs> slightly shave off the sideburns. Yeah, no sideburns. <laughs> sideburns, put a few lines in. See, or give it like a hot This is kind of what I found quite confusing about this film, right? Because, mm-hmm. okay, yeah, you got like this sort of text crawl saying, oh, people have got this illness, the NAS, or the black shakes. It's like, you know. It's dawn, uh, of uh, dawn. <laughs> dawn of the 21st century. Dawn of the 21st century. But then you see a little bit of like urban riot. So sorry, Dan Harmon. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize to Dan Harmon. <laughs> no, it's, it's the worst impression of <laughs> I mean, just apologizing to a guy to the superior impression of someone we're actually <laughs> taking the piss out of yeah uh, uh, <laughs> yeah but you see this reminds me a bit of strange days that look people mm-hmm. just pissed off in the street but that's kind of all you see of it though mm-hmm. i mean yeah you see like outdoor scenes but you... one of my criticisms of this film is i think it lacks scale yeah because you're always following johnny but you don't really see that much for the wider world around him. I mean, there's glimpses. Like, I, I think we were discussing it the other day, weren't we? I, I said that it feels like it's had the first sort of 15, 20 minutes. Yeah, you don't really know of much of, like, what the class system is. You see a few gangs here and there. You see, like, a few crime syndicates, but that's uh, about it. Well, that's the thing. He's in this sort of upmarket hotel now, isn't mm. he? In Beijing. But then, yeah, mostly, like, yeah, I mean, it's the whole corporation's rule and it's you know, the high-tech, low-life kind of thing going on there, which William Gibson started. I mean, I know, obviously, like, you know, Phil K. Dick, a lot of people, you know, he's, would regard him as being, to some extent, the founder of cyberpunk genre. But I think most people would agree that William Gibson really sort of condensed it and really made it into what it is. And because a lot of Philip K. Dick stuff, it was kind of like, you could relate it to cyberpunk, but it was also kind of like broader sci-fi, but sure. And he coined a lot of new terms. Yeah. Like yeah. Jacking in, which you see Keanu doing right here. Yeah. Although it's not very, <laughs> not, the, not the only film you see him sticking <laughs> wires in his head. It looked like, yeah, no, but it looked like he stuck like a little pin inside his head. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, it's nineteen ninety-five. What do you want? There you go. Like, see, I, I do, I do. I don't know. I, I obviously, it's got a lot of flaws. This film, but I think it is like what thirteen percent on Rotten Tomatoes, and I do feel like it's a bit unfair. Because I do remember the time as I was a kid, and this came out, and people just trashed it. Critics trashed it, and like. Yeah, it isn't great. But I just remember from the time... I never, it put me off on watching it for a while because I just heard it was absolute garbage. And when I finally got around to watching it, I'm going, yeah, it's not great, but it, I really don't think it's that bad. I mean, some of it is a bit silly, and I wonder if oh, that's partly... a bit of it silly. <laughs> I think part of that's due to the budget. And also, I think that they didn't really know where they wanted to go with it. It, well, it smacks to me of to like take the story. <laughs> well, I think the the thought it was was it Sony? It was Sony, wasn't it? The, the studio, and it smacked to me of like they go, oh well, oh there's potential in this. Let's make it into a blockbuster, and like it's it's kind of not supposed to because you read the source material. It's much more stripped down. It's 
it's much more sort of neo noir, and they're trying to make this a bit more blockbustery, and it doesn't really fit. It's kind of incongruent, and I actually really would have liked, out of curiosity, to see like what the you know one and a half million dollar art house kind of minimalist here's, film would look like. Here's a question: Do you think they'll ever remake something like this? Do you know what the horrible thing is? I think they do. It, if they did, they do it one or two ways. They'd either make it some bloated. They'd even they'd either put more money into it and and take it even further away from the source material. And oh, sure. we've got more money now. Make it more explosions and more fights in it. Or they do it in a fucking semi naff, faux, ironic way or some shit. Where they try and play that card. Oh, see, it's stupid. Like the other fun. And uh, I don't know. I this this should have been. Like I think with um, Burning Chrome, you could have made a few. You could have made a mini series out of Burning Chrome, like a Netflix or an HBO. Yeah, I mini-series. think this should have been like this should have been one of like maybe like a, f- a few episodes where Johnny Mnemonic's story should have been like I don't know an hour long. I wonder if they like could that. have even made this into like an animated anthology as well. Yeah, that I could see that working. I could see something like this uh, uh, actually. Um, Burning Chrome. The whole thing being made in something a bit like the Animatrix or something, you know. Did you get different sort of animators and stuff, yes. or you know, different styles? And it it definitely would have fit with that kind of bizarre sort of William Gibson aesthetic. You know, you and could I'm surprised they didn't do it like that because in the '90s, especially, animation was still popular. Yeah, you see, as much as I've researched into this, I, I haven't been able to find quite the root of like why they decided to put so much money into like, this specifically. I easily could have seen this as like an MTV short that they did back in the 90s. It does feel like that. It's, yeah. got, it's got that kind of... It's almost like that live action influence. Yeah. Like, I feel like a... Grungy sci-fi. Like, sci-fi Aeon kind Flux of kind of thing. Yeah. I mean, it's obviously it's live action, but it's kind of... It feels a bit MTV-ish, a bit kind of... I don't know... I'm trying to put my finger on it. I'm doing a shit job of it. But, again, I don't get this, right? He's he's uploading a load of data into his head. Yeah. He's... Why does it hurt? <laughs> you know? Why, why would you do that? Why does he have to see the data? I mean, why why is the data connected to his brain? I mean, you would have thought if you were, like... Obviously, what he's doing is kind of black market, right? Mm. So you would have thought if you were these guys and trusting him to a load of confidential data that he has to be a courier for... Would you want him potentially seeing any of this or remembering any of it? It's I mean, not very good, Corey. It's, more, <laughs> it's just a data mule. I mean, they don't <laughs> usually give someone like, hey, this is some top secret documents. Like, feel free to take a peek before you deliver them to right. the contact, you right. know? You would have thought it'd just be locked off. Like, literally just like if it was you or I making some space in your skull and sticking also, like an ex- external hard drive in it or something. Mind you, the information is mostly, it looks like, just like little clips of like animation and anime. <laughs> uh, anime and sort of like, I don't know, like lawnmower man stuff, <laughs> yeah. bit of stuff that left over. Uh, HD. You know, you've got the not at all <laughs> suspicious looking Yakuza in the big black trench coats. I love the I'm, guy with the high pony. Gotta love a man with I'm, a high pony. And one token white guy. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't draw any attention in the middle of a high-end Beijing hotel. Look See, at that. I didn't notice that before the little indentation on his nose and his forehead. <laughs> from the, the, the glory of you in this in high definition. How many hours did he have that on his face? Well, like how, how many, many takes, takes it? Right? <laughs> Exactly. How many takes did they do just to get them? Mini much? discs. <laughs> the, the format of the future right there. Uh, and then you've got this sort of coded this sort of three picture slide. And cause isn't it isn't his capacity because I have well, forgotten now, I wasn't listening. But doesn't he only have like about hundred and sixty gig storage in his head, but for some reason he's managed to like fit three hundred and twenty right. gig in there? Like that's right. not even how hard drives work. Like, what if you really force it in there? You can yeah. fit it, but it'll give him he headaches. Put in, <laughs> he puts some of the info in a few zip folders. Yeah, yeah. be great. It'd be great if it's just like, I, just like a zip disk. And this part is one of my favorite parts. He's doing some yeah. like yeah. some tai chi yeah. just to center himself because you know that works. Yeah. 
to stop the mega frame data overload, yo. <laughs> I'd love it if instead of that little plug on the side of his head, he just had like a zip disk drive at the top of his head. It's like a, it looks like a fucking toaster. <laughs> just slot it in there. <laughs> it's just like, uh, but like, looks like a four slice toaster. Just right. stick those in. <laughs> Combine the Brave uh, Little Toaster and Brave New World together. <laughs> I like it. Shh, shh, don't be saying, saying that on the podcast. We're giving away amazing ideas. <laughs> some, some executive will steal that. <laughs> so all the scientists, the heavily armed scientists getting shot up by the Yakuza. It's like, where did you hear that before? Oh, it was a stream of consciousness thing. Actually, <laughs> I heard it. <laughs> White guy with sunglasses indoors. So you know he's a bad guy. <laughs> showing, showing absolutely... No emotion whatsoever. <laughs> oh god, there's some. Oh, especially there's in, some in the amazing first lines. In Jesus, this. Is fucking clunky as shit. Seriously, Christ. Next time, knock, bro. Ba- Baldy. <laughs> Good tactic that jump on the dude's back. Well, the way you always make women do that. I don't know what to do. I'll jump on the guy's back or yeah. bite him or something. Maybe choke him out where he <laughs> just. Shoots me in the ribs. Johnny arrives just in time to not stop the woman getting shot. And then you got, you got, um, what was it? Shinji, his name is, mm. with um, the laser Monofil- monofilament wire that comes out as prosthetic thumb. Whereas I believe in the original book it was just a regular monofilament wire, and he was wearing a Hawaiian shirt. But I guess it doesn't look as edgy in the mid nineties as wearing full length trench coats. Well, I mean, we also discussed this too. I think it was probably better because how are you realistically going to see just well, very sure. thin monofilament wire on film? It's just yeah. going to be like a tiny little black line across the screen. And I, I guess it doesn't have as much impact as something as cool as this. I guess, oh no, got, got all fingers in your broccoli there, mate. <laughs> <laughs> and where do you get this from, right? Where's his... Where's his fucking disguise from he's got like a beret and a wig yeah does he just kind of like you oh, know is it reversible clothing yeah, again just looks like right. a looks like a stretched french school girl on an exchange program <laughs> and it's like his thing is that a mask because it looks just like his face but with a fake tan but it looks like he's wearing a mask as well i think they said pull a frown slightly and then they put it but they put more got, makeup on him he's got loads of tan on him the free city in newark <laughs> right you're a new yorker this is what newark looks like it's close enough to you. Uh, you know, who knows? Because they probably film part of this in Canada because that's what they like to do. Yeah, well, it's, you, know, you want the aesthetic of America, but you don't want to pay the money for it? Just, just in Canada. Just go to Toronto. That's because they're usually just Toronto, isn't it? Yeah. Sometimes Vancouver a little bit. Or Ontario. Ooh. Is that supposed to be Concord? I couldn't see. It was actually kind of blurry. John Smith. Another John. He is literally John in every mm. movie. I think he has played like, I think it's like eight Johns or something. I can't remember all of what they are, but like in all his films, there's like eight different Johns. So, we'll continue. So it's the free city of Newark, but then like, what's the, because this is the problem with this film, right? You, you know that you know, corporations rule and it's a, it's, you know, there's a lot of, again, it's the classic side punk thing of like, you know, high tech, low life, you know, lots of crime and poverty. And, and there's Takeshi Miki, the guy who doesn't, doesn't he like, I think, you think he makes some like three film has made like three films a year for Christ knows how many years. It's more productive than me. <laughs> I should say Takeshi Miki. I'm probably going to get pulled up in my terrible Japanese pronunciation. I've still got um oh was it Thirteen Assassins up there by him that I've still yet to watch. Because yeah. you know he used to be a comedian, you know. I didn't realize that. No, that's how he came up. Like he was like, he was basically in Japan. He's known. He was known as like some. Um, he was kind of like but like a sort of variety sort of pre watershed family type comedian, and then he yeah he was on a few shows like a bit like light comic relief. And he just went into filmmaking, and he just makes an absolute shit. Ton. I think he's made like over a hundred films. See, that's incredible. He's made over a hundred films. I don't know how long. Maybe like 
30 years or something like that. I don't know. Again, this is where I start talking shit that I can't remember. So it's just proper comment bait where someone will just go, I think you'll find it's 27 years and it's 102 films. But I know he's made over 100. And actually half of those were failures. No. Well, no, it, well, that's the thing, no, to be fair, it's one of those things he's so prolific. I mean, I've seen quite a few of his films, but yeah, as you can expect from someone who just churns out that much, they're not all great. But then some of them are brilliant. Like, again, apparently 13 Assassins, which is on my shelf right now, is supposed to be like one of the best samurai movies ever. So, you know, I, I, I need to get around to seeing it. It's not really appropriate for this channel, <laughs> unfortunately. You can't really sort of weasel in some cyberpunk references to it. I like how it's supposed to be a cyberpunk future, but you have, like, an old cab. <laughs> but it's got, like, a really shitty video screen in the back. But, oh, bless him. I wonder if anyone asks him about this much nowadays. I bet they do now. Keanu, you know, since he, everyone, like, cacked themselves with his appearance in that trailer. I'd say they probably would start asking him this stuff more now. Because I feel like for a few years, he kind of dropped off a little bit. Well, he did, didn't he? And it, well, I'd say up until... Uh, in, in terms of success, because he wasn't a few things. But I, I'd argue in recent years, it's really kind of John Wick that brought him mm -hmm. back into the sort of A-list kind of thing. But he's, credit to him, though, he's always been around. Uh, boyhood crush, Dina Meyer there, and... <laughs> And the awesome Henry Rollins. And you still haven't watched the rest of He Never Died, have you? I will. Which is a great film with him in it. Look at that. Right, you're an artist. What is that 80s style with the makeup and like, you see the way that, you know, when you're doing like fashion sketches and mm -hmm. stuff? You know yeah. what I'm talking about, don't you? I'm making a terrible point of getting this across. Um, yeah, yeah, it's... Um... It's a very uh, well. At the time, it was a very editorial look. To... Well, I'm sure there's a, there's a there's a name for that style. You know where you with all the sort of sketches of you know you're doing the things. contouring. Yeah, and like it was quite it's quite angular, and mm. you've got that high contrast makeup and everything's very Nagel esque. Mm. <laughs> I kind of wish that we got the the mirrored eyes. Yeah, oh yeah, of course, cause, of course, yeah, because uh, we have Dina Mayer playing Jane, Jane, is it Jane or Jade? Jade. Jade, isn't it? I think it was Jane. Jane. <laughs> Shit, I find out, again, I'm just talking over it and not listening, but um, we'll find out in a minute. But um, yeah, because she plays, the, her character's based on Molly Millions mm -hmm. in, in the um, original short story with the cool retractable claws under her fingernails and her mirror shades implanted in her face and yeah she's supposed to be like full on badass yeah isn't it I think in the original story she's one who hires Johnny because that was a criticism of this film it was like they kind of just added in a load of extraneous characters for no particularly good reason and that's a lot of people's criticism really it's just I mean, okay, she's just a watered-down, adapted version of Molly, but... It's also kind of hard for the time to sort of do, like, um, like a CG mirrored eye look. Well, she would like look a... dumb, wouldn't she? She'd look... Because they would just... You know what they'd probably have to do? Just, like, literally sticking on mirror shade type things to her eye sockets, and she wouldn't be able to see what the fuck she was doing. But, um... Yeah, um, but no, nah, I mean they kind of had to adapt in the nineties. Here's a man, Ice T. <laughs> Literally played almost the same character in Tank Girl, which also came out the same year. What are you talking about? Plays the same character in everything. <laughs> <laughs> God bless it. What was? It? Oh, is he is he in like NCIS or something now or it's yeah, well, some something like that? Isn't it? I don't really watch those programs. But. Neither do I. I watched his reality show for a little bit. 
What was it actually called? I bet it have some funny play on words, like, you know. It's probably like ice and cocoa or something. Time for tea. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't know. I just, the one thing I remember tea and about. Cocoa. <laughs> maybe. The one thing I remember about that show was like, it was an episode where they're, their dog was running away or somebody's else, somebody else's dog was running away and she literally hopped over a fence and heels. That's all I remember. She's a trooper. God love her. <laughs> Ridiculously unwieldy guy. And a cowboy I can't hat. work out if Johnny's particularly capable or these Yakuza are just shit. Well, isn't he supposed to be like an idiot savant? Well. More emphasis on the idiot, it seems yeah. like. Sometimes. Is that your way of explaining the way Keanu's acting in this? No, it's it's sort of like, I'm just not sure what the character wants to be. I can't really tell if he's just supposed to be really smart or he just falls, like he's just falls on well, his feet every again, time. Again, that's my criticism of this film. Cause it's like I say, I feel like they've chopped out the first 20 minutes because there's very little character development or introduction. I mean, I don't necessarily need a an origin i don't really know well, no i'm not saying i need everything laid out for me but it does seem to just kind of go and with that yeah i i'm more interested in henry rollins character and his, his character doesn't even appear in the original story like i'm more interested because of the way henry awesome. rollins starts acting oh no the, the done kill ice tea's mate Oh, yeah, the kid who stuck his head out of a the window. Ki the kid, speaking of no character development whatsoever. <laughs> I can't remember what he's credited as. It's like kid who gets shot in the head. But, um, how did he get that? Was that like a wire? Because it seemed like he just floated down there. Yeah, but he's think... rappelling down. <laughs> you weren't on the menu. Whoa. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> there's some, there some cringe-worthy line delivery in this. I don't, it's, like, it's like a Coke can launcher he's got there or something. It's very oh. cartoony. It's very... <laughs> Speak of cartoony. Ooh. It's oh. like, you know, if you want to be cool and edgy and sci-fi on a budget, just Put some goggles on. I was going to say, put some goggles on that a you never coat. actually use. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> a trench coat and, um, you know, maybe some padding and pouches. Don't forget pouches. Yeah. Well, we're straight into a different kind of comic territory. Yeah. Now, <laughs> and don't have any feet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, better change the subject. Anyway, back on to <laughs> Jane and Mark. See... Is that like rear projection or something? Is it? I don't know. I can't. I, I forgot where. I a, forgot where this is shot. To be honest, which doesn't help. It could have been a mantra that they just lit. Because you know, when you look at Udo Kier, you think his name's probably Ralphie. <laughs> <laughs> German character actor. He's got that wide-eyed thing going on. <laughs> That's such a funny cut. Funk. Oh, Jesus. Get it? It's cyberpunk. People are dressed weird. There's a woman lip-syncing some opera, but there's some kind of metal in the background. Yeah, it's a uh, fifth element before it was the fifth element. Oh, geez. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Luke Besson ripped it off. Just, what... Two years later, was it ninety seven Fifth Element? Yes. Yeah. But to be fair to him, he's been he he's been writing <laughs> that story since he was I a kid, know. and and I think I don't know if the development for that film was like what See, it was careful. like a, we're a already, few years. We're already getting distracted about talking about a better film. <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> Easily edge off there. There's Dino in a chafy chainmail. Yeah, that I still don't get. I just. Also, like, how's it going to be much protection if you haven't got anything underneath it? Same. Like, oh. Knee pads, I love those. Oh, yeah, you need pads as well. I was loving post apocalyptic shit. You get people like wearing stuff. It's a combination of, like football pads and dirt bike armor, isn't it? Like, you know, like motocross kind of plasticky stuff. Uh. 
my brain's going to explode too. <laughs> oh, Keanu. You earn that paycheck, Keanu. Isn't hers matching makeup? I wonder what that uh, silver getup that one of the bodyguards is wearing. It almost looks like duct tape. I can't even tell if it's... It almost seems like that they just took fabric and they said, you know what, we'll just wrap a few people in this shit. <laughs> Maybe. So, like, this guy's a Yakuza assassin, but also, what, a surgeon now? With the... Oh. The little uh, Coke <laughs> thumbnail, which yeah, is yeah. really practical. Little Coke spoon thumbnail. What? See, or he just scratches his nose a little bit and see, dig, somewhere he they, digs for some gold. Why do they need to do all this, right? Because this is what I don't understand. If you just need what's in his head, then cut his head off, take it, you know. Also, did, did he put like head. a red clown nose in his mouth? <laughs> As if like a gag? Because they couldn't find a ball gag. Like, this works. It looks super edgy. It's the future. Oh, switchblade. Oh, and this is the only time you see a weird kind of whip, kind of baton thing. Ah, she's great. What happened to DMA? She's awesome. I don't know. Do you think she got typecast? Because she did kind of play the same kind of roles and lot of stuff. Maybe. Maybe, or maybe she just got tired of acting. I think she's still acting. No, actually. she's still acting. Yeah. See, because I, I believe in the. Um, actually, I won't say yeah, because it'll kind of like get ahead of ourselves in terms of the plot. But she's capable in this. But basically, um, Molly Millions in the book is just like a full and absolutely just indestructible killing machine in the book. Yeah, and in this one, this character just seems kind of well, useless well, yeah, well, to some. Well, it's a bit weird. She's kind of in, inconsistent, right? Because right. she manages to, you know, completely save him against a bunch of scary fuckers. And then later on, I don't know. You can't fucking kill me. Uh, it's one of those things where, like, oh, yeah, Udo Kier just gets cut into bits. Yeah. But, um, yeah. I just can't seem to work out, especially like Shinji's thing, because he's hired to do a job, but then it's like, oh, it's that classic thing of a bad guy going, yeah, I know we're working together, but you've pissed me off now, so I'll just kill you, regardless of whatever ramifications that could have for my job. Right. Like, he doesn't have to answer to anyone but himself. Well, is, wasn't he? He's hired by the head guy from Pharmacom, though, isn't he? That's the... I don't know, it's a bit... It does feel like... I don't know, I mean... <laughs> for people who aren't necessarily fans of this film, you know, it probably wouldn't would disagree with me here, but it does feel like it kind of needs an, a, like an extra half an hour adding on to it. But, you know... I, I, I just feel like these padding out in places, like, it needs a little bit more... It, aesthetically, and again, this is where I'll defend this film, right? Aesthetically, I really do think it nails the cyberpunk vibe. My problem is more with character development, really. But again, I, I just think that it's just one of those things that I don't think it's suitable to make a film out of. You could have made like a really sort of tight one-hour episode out of this story if you're doing like a miniseries or something. See, this bit I don't get. There's like, what about... 15 low tech guys see i was telling you <laughs> who they reminded me of uh there was a show in the 90s that i used to watch a, uh the tribe oh, new yeah, zealand tribe based thing. uh show like <laughs> all the characters sort of remind me with like the weird face paint see this is what i don't get like... right the low techs have got the drop on them right it's like about 15 of them and like what three or four yeah because it just mm -hmm. why just kill them it's not really much of a standoff if there's 
you kind of outflank well, that them would have been the whole movie more, that would have been the whole movie but right i'm just there. saying but then my point would be like well, why not have like a roughly equal amount of low tech guys <laughs> yeah because i'm like you've got like three times as many dudes yeah unless you kill you kill him and then the the yakuza are going to come after him because he's such an important <laughs> member he's going to come after water too <laughs> <laughs> I find like um, it is it is Jane, isn't it? I find her um, her character seems to be a bit inconsistent throughout this because she starts off all like wired and shit and a bit manic, and then she kind of just loses that character trait a bit way through the film, and she just I don't know. It's she starts off like some mad tweaker, like. Oh, look. oh my god, he's getting all the data in his brain. He's oh, no. overloading his mainframe. I oh, know. He's hacked too many megabytes. That's what it is. <laughs> oh my god, you've got eyes. He's got cyber brain rot. And here's the thing, they never show him, like, taking any medication. There's, like, nothing. It's, like, clearly, like, this has been done before. But it's, like, they don't take any precautions. See, I always thought when you get, like, you know, in this way, you know, he's a courier, so he's got a hard drive in his brain. So, therefore, you know, it's supposed to be more discreet and, you know, subtle with him you know, storing it in his actual head compared to, say, I don't know, carrying around an external hard drive. But then if people know that that's what he is, then surely the main advantage of you being one of those kind of couriers is people don't know that's what you're doing. So as soon as people know, oh, yeah, he's got the information in his head, it's like it's like if you're one of those people who, like, you know, you're carrying around a briefcase that you've got your hand handcuffed to, I'd be nervous as fuck doing that so I think if anyone wanted the briefcase that badly, they just hack my hand off. You know what I mean? Like, like instead of just going, oh well, if you were carrying around a hard drive in your pocket, you just go, well, we're gonna have to take your head off now. Well, or like, well, here's the weird thing. Now, because he has the hard drive in his head, because it's some kind of equipment, does he feel it when it heats up? Because there's certain. Well, it's obviously not insulated, is it? Because well, they, yeah, they... because they. I do know, like, now people do some uh, extreme modifications where they'll have magnets under their fingertips. And after a certain time, if it's not working anymore, they remove it. Or I know more recently, I mean, obviously, that people have put silicone under their skin. Hmm. Uh, but there was See, one... See, people put, like, ball bearings and stuff. Yeah, in there. but there, there was one uh, company, I, I don't think they're around anymore because they were actually trying to put, like, uh, LEDs and things that lit up under people's skin. But here's the thing, things like that tend to overheat and, you know... Well, well in LEDs, even though, like, they don't need so much power in that, they'll burn out eventually. Yeah. So what do you do? You get your whole, you know... I'd, well, this years and years ago, I think it's supposed to be like at least a good twenty years ago, more than that probably. There's um, a robotics professor, or at least he was there. I don't know if he's still there anymore. In some university down south in England, I can't even remember which university it is, but he's head of robotics, and he's obsessed with making himself a cyborg. And I remember yeah. even at the time, can he like, open up a door? Well, yeah, he's like yeah. implanted like a microchip under his skin so like whenever like he went near a door in his department it, it'd, it'd correspond with that and it'd open for him and that but um you know things like things like that and i don't know i mean i don't know if um I don't, see there's no point in me saying all that shit because like, i can't remember what his name is i can't remember what university it is but um yeah yeah she's taking off her makeup now she's a bit more chilled out Entertain the kiddies for one second. Okay. No pressure. I just need to... Right now, Keanu's very upset that he has no parents. Actually, I'm sorry. That's Johnny. Do <laughs> <laughs> any parents? You... Do you have any parents? <laughs> oh, he needs a computer. Here's the thing. I mean, I know that he had his memories wiped and everything, but it's like, can you... If you don't know your past and you don't really know who you are, can you really get that upset? 
of Val. <laughs> well, it's like, well, again, but that isn't... I don't understand a lot more. If at the beginning of the film, it should have started off with him having some kind of weird fragmented dream. Right. Yeah, like you, you had so, It would have had more of an impact narratively if you had like a little bit of him as a kid... But then there's a bit of a glitch in between that jumped forward to like a, another part of his life. So there's chunks missing and you, right. you'd show that to the audience. And then you straight away know that that's a prime motivator for him. Yeah. But they don't really show it. It's just like, oh, like the rest of my childhood. Because I wouldn't mind if he's like, you know, he's strictly just a mule. Like he doesn't care. He's kind of robotic. He doesn't really... It's just fuck it, he'll yeah. do it for the money. Yeah, exactly. And it's more about, you know, then when he gets bits of his memory back, maybe when he gets some of the data, like it's making him. Like, it would be more intriguing if actually, like, you know, he, he finds out if the twist is when he does get his memory back, maybe there's a reason why he didn't mind getting rid of it. Like maybe it's some bad memories or something right. like that. Or, maybe, you know, the whole point is him wanting to be like a courier like that. It's because he wanted a fresh start or something. Right. Like that, that would be a kind of cool twist, I think, you know. But um, mm-hmm. but I, I I don't know. It's but again, it's been a long time since a long long time since I've read um, the initial short story to this. I look you know, the most straightforward interface a computer because you know why use icons on a desktop when you can reinterlock sections from a big triangle. This is, I think this is a scene most people remember because future hacking and shit. The only good scene. <laughs> How very dare you. No, that's not true. There's some, there's really, there's some amazing We've scenes. We've got a cyborg dolphin to look, look forward to. Yep. Yeah, hashtag spoilers. <laughs> Janky echo. Why did she take her makeup off? She just did. Question is How? And with what? You don't know. Hey, hey, look, it's a cybernetic future, right? She could have like a wet wipe dispenser in her armpit or something like that. You don't know. Oh, yeah. She pulled out a wet one from her finger. That's the newest one <laughs> from her middle finger. She... <laughs> and this one, she doesn't have retractable blades. <laughs> She's got feminine hygiene products. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, oh, God. we got to do hackers. We do we gotta do hackers. I mean like I'm sure it would be quite popular if we did. Because, you know Hector Gibson. Speaking of yeah, janky fucking dialogue. No, like I know I know I'm supposed to be focusing on the visor and him doing this stuff, but all I can ever focus on is, is his two little fangs in his mouth. You so judgmental. I know I can't help it. I just think whenever I stop and think about what's really fucking weird to me is because obviously, like, you know, we are similar in age. So we grew up, you know, with him doing Bill and Ted and, like, you know, Point Break, Speed, et cetera, et cetera. And I think it's mad that, you know, there'll be kids nowadays because it's 20 years old that won't even, not so won't know, but, you know, they're born after when The Matrix came out. You know, well, and that to me, that I was don't like. Get. But I'm just saying that that's mad because, again, that's like a. To, to me, when I was watching, that was like a a new lease of life for his acting. Like, you know, that was like, that did for Keanu's career at the time, in 1999, what John Wick has done for him now. You know sure. what I mean? That was kind of like a, a, a second win for him then, wasn't it? Yeah. And so that was what, that was kind of what made him super cool again. Not that he was never not cool, but you know, that's what really, you know, blasted him back up to the A-list kind of thing. And yeah, but then this God, it just makes you feel old. That's all. Like, it makes you feel old that the fucking Matrix is twenty years old. Speak for yourself. Yeah, you're not that much younger than me. I am. You're not a fucking liar. Don't reveal a woman's age. Thank you very much. Wasn't about to. Just making a point. <laughs> I mean, twenty years ago, it still feels like yesterday to me. I don't know. Yeah, ninety nine now is a good year for films in general if i recall saw a few anyway we're getting off topic again we're talking about better films again yay pink hearing grenade yeah with a little tiny troll troll doll yeah at some point she would have got bored and gone yeah what right i'm a little bit of a loose end i might spray paint my grenade also where did that come from 
Oh, it showed it before, like when they were in the alleyway, briefly. Oh, right. But it's just, yeah, because she's just edgy and dangerous. She keeps a live grenade on it yeah, on her keys. Exactly. It's like, don't you? It's got AT and T and then Cyber Future. I like how that uh, that desk that he has, the corporate desk. It's like so basic. It's just it looks like a block of cardboard. Oh, Dolph Lundgren. Again, I'm trying to think. Right, circa 1995. This is kind of like I'm sure his career had died off a bit by then. You know, after like the late 80s, he mm. wasn't getting much work. To Jesus. Yeah, I told you I had a giant wooden cross when I was a yeah. kid that I repainted. I marbleized it because that's what you did in the nineties. It's like, did you have a mar marble? Yeah, did you have a marbleizing kit? I did. <laughs> no, you know how they did it, right? You you paint so, like for example, if you're doing uh, black it's, and gray this marble, is how bored we've got we're trying to marble. <laughs> you're telling the kids at home how to marble. So this is shit. how you marbleize. You paint it all in a matte black, <laughs> and then you. You have like a little natural sponge and then you sponge it with like the gray after you put the black base. And then they gave you a feather and then you created like the veins. Is that yeah. how you, well, you know what? Yeah. There you go, kids. You learn you something go. new every day. There you go. Now, bringing back marbleizing. Who go. needs to know about Dolph Lundgren's mad Marbleize your donuts. Fucking like street Marbleize preacher. your shoes, your <laughs> table. Oh. <laughs> there you go. Ah. Uh. It's like a little sort of barcode gun, that is. Yeah, uh, yeah. Because, yeah. yeah, of course, Dolph Lundgren's Street Preacher character, along with Henry Rollins' character, did not exist in the original short story because for some reason they thought, we need an extra villain for some reason. I mean, I, I don't mind the whole weird religious cult thing in the future. But again, he's just introduced out of nowhere, though. That's the thing. There's no background for that in this film. He's just he just gets contacted. Yeah, he's, he's kind there. of like I have a cross dagger. I'm wearing a red robe. I'm a bit mad, but but again, there's no build up to it. And this is what I mean. There's a lot of just, I, you know, fittingly enough, the the um, characters that weren't in the original story that were shoehorned into this, the way they are introduced in the film do you feel very shoehorned? Like, all of a sudden, and there they are, kind of thing. And, like, do you really need, like, Dolph... I mean, don't wrong, I, I love me some Dolph Lundgren at any time, but his character, do you really need him, like, when he's already been pursued by Yakuza? Really? It just feels like he was just thrown in there for the sake of it. Oh, here we go. Best comedy... Well, one of the best comedy scenes in the film. Oh, yeah, now I'm <laughs> just randomly gonna twitch. <laughs> <laughs> but not even like have a spaz out it's like she's just sort of oh, Jesus. she's like doing some kind of interpretive dance <laughs> Dina throw yourself about a bit oh my god it's amazing and also if this is a common thing with people who are modified how come nobody, everybody's looking around like oh this is a thing like I've never well, seen before well that's the thing right because the whole point is he's got the cure to this right yeah, she's the only person, the only character you see in this film actually suffering from it. But apparently it's this rife epidemic that's killing millions. Yeah, but then again, we later on we do see like a bunch of people laid out on a bed and you're supposed to assume that they're suffering from the same thing. Yeah, but then thing. that's... This is what I mean. There's just... Things are just thrown in there. That's the problem. There's no... Even though aesthetically the world looks good, it doesn't kind of set it up whereas and you know, obviously like it's a bit of a you know a bit of a lofty thing to compare it to but you know you see the first few scenes of blade runner it establishes yeah. the world you she's know got, why is she bleeding from her lip did she bite her lip she bite know. her tongue because she's not really having a seizure because she could still talk to him well, yeah it's i mean if it's technology you'd think it's simulate more like being electrocuted or something mm. not like just Throwing herself around all over the place. That red one. See, Cyberpunk 2077 fans. You got yourself a ripper doc in the form, form <laughs> of um, Henry Rollins. Yeah. Oh, you know what? If, if CD Projekt Red have got any sense about them, 
they should definitely have have a little cameo of him playing some kind of ripper doc in cyberpunk what do you reckon maybe he was tapped maybe you don't know maybe. information overload <laughs> <laughs> I think it's safe to say he makes the entire film. Oh, I'd love me some Henry Rollins. The problem is, I know they're trying, maybe they're trying to do an ironic thing because obviously he's like just really built and his neck's as wide as his head. If I stick some glasses on him, you make a convincing doctor. No, but he is my favorite character in this film. <laughs> oh, yeah, again, well, I mean, I, I love Henry Rollins and everything. There you go. Bones, body. Yeah, <laughs> Pray silence, please, for the iced tea. Oh, man. I love those. <laughs> I love the futuristic binoculars. It's just, it just seems edited really weird. It just, I don't know, it, it feels like there's bits cut out of it. It feels like the shot load of footage I had to go, this is unusable. Shit, what have we got left? this oh fuck can you make something out of it sort of thing it, it's just the way it flows it's very weird i don't know it doesn't i feel like they could have cut a lot of characters in general from it like it didn't have to be so they should have made this like a simple chase movie that's the right. problem they should have had it like a, a lot like just quicker tempo. Yeah. You didn't need all the characters. They just needed, like, Johnny, need, you, you do a ticking clock thing. Well, I mean, he technically, he does have a ticking clock thing, so he's got to have, like, you know, the information out of his head within 24 hours, but you don't really feel like stuff's counting down. You don't get the reminder yeah. of that that much. So, like, if you literally had to get from point A to point B, and, you know, and he was being pursued, and it was, you know, he was doing yeah. lots of running, and you know, yeah. maybe he had and a car chase. And I also chasing feel like they something. didn't have to have uh, too many of like these different locations that I kind of feel like are absolutely useless. Yeah, I mean, well, it is like, so, like they say, we watched that Cinefix video, where they did the What's the Difference? And um, it's like, for example, there's a lot of redundancy there, there's a lot of things in there that narratively don't need to be there. So much as we both like Henry Rollins, right? You don't need him. Because you don't need him to get the information out of his head because you've got the dolphin at the end of it. Mm -hmm. So what's the point? See, man buns before they were cool. (laughs) What I like about that particular character, this old man, like he reminds me of a character in the comic Twilight is a very good sci-fi comic not to be confused with the awful young adult series yeah the shimmering vampire ones no not that yeah. one vampires with the disco skin no the very adult uh, twilight comic with howard yeah. Chaikin and uh good, good, garcia good, lopez good old howard <laughs> not ne- never a source of controversy <laughs> <laughs> <That's all. laughs> do you reckon like robert longo just went to Dolph Lundgren just do whatever you want, mate. Have fun with it. Just make sure you get Jesus in every line and yeah. we're all good. Look right. at the little tiny <laughs> little spring. spring. <laughs> I didn't notice that. The last... uh... <laughs> He's a good character, that bartender. You know that they pulled that out of some pen and they just said, ah, stick it in there, that old guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, I like the idea of like, you know, when they do like a proper cyberpunk film. And it's the costume designs, the set designs. They just go around going like, just go like a scrap heap or something. They just go yeah. to the junkyard or some shit and just go, just stick that on that and that on that. Just get some like, yeah. just tubing, stick it on the wall. That'll do. Well, it's like um, you know, Tetsuo the Iron Man. He just went to like, literally just went down the junkyard and just got, just kept gluing bits of metal on. Like just, Random shit. Oh. <laughs> See, that light was actually smoking there. I wonder if they intended that. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they did. I'm sure it's all about the cyberpunk authenticity. I meant to do that. 
not at all that they just hadn't done proper safety checks before they started shooting stuff right behind <laughs> Keanu's head yeah see that looks quite small I mean I don't know DMA side boob <laughs> she's appraising Johnny's head with his jeweler's glasses <laughs> seepage that just sounds unsanitary let's get some data seepage it's bleeding into the mega net it's dumping all your hardware uh, spider with your misfit tattoo So she's like all right now? Oh, it's just an episode. It's like having a seizure. She's fine. <laughs> but I, uh, just see, that's a really table. weird scene transition. I, I swear to God, they just... This just feels... The way this is edited, there's just some very sudden, very odd transitions. <laughs> Ooh, so it's so he's just uh, the street preacher is implied to be some like hyper augmented mentalist Jesus Jesus it's like an American Jesus that's the wrong film <laughs> it's, it's kind of like it's very the like, flat iron yeah, yeah. very empty streets it, 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 again because you saw in like Beijing at the beginning all these riots and stuff and I don't know. I'm, yeah, you got a few people there. It, it just seems quite an empty cityscape, empty landscape in general through a lot of this. I think that's what I mean. It's mostly just sets and locations. Yeah, like this is the like the most amount of extras extras yeah. you see. Like in so the... is that all they could afford? Just that one location for that one day, or yeah? And uh, is this supposed to be something like Grand Central like Station? Stunt Macaulay Culkin. Yeah, because now they're supposed to be in New York. Or like what seems like New York. Because the flat iron and stuff. Yeah. You know see, so this is the first time I see people with the black shakes, but then it seems like, I don't know, what, what gets me is this seems more like it's some kind of illness that's affecting the poor. Mm -hmm. But then it's born of technology. Right. So wouldn't it be affecting everybody? I mean, this just seems like... Well, because the one guy that was shaking, he just looks like a regular, what, like, working class guy. What would he need? Like, what kind of augments would he need? Well, that's to what I'm Would that was cost it... you stuff? Yeah. So why is it... Or like... is it that it's, like, certain augments that you need to perform certain jobs? And so, like... Well, certain... I can understand if, like, maybe cheaper ones kind of right. fucked with you or something like that, but then... The way Spider was talking about it, it's like it, it affects everybody. But then, I don't know, it, again, there's a bit... I'm Not that I ever want everything spoon-fed to me, but it kind of leaves out a bit too much. It's a Wi-Fi disease. It's a Wi-Fi. You get your Wi-Fi. Data aids. So, it's... I suppose you're like, how many things should we stick to Keanu Reeves' head? Uh, so you must have a waterproof cover for that when he goes in the shower. <laughs> Can you imagine that if you just forgot one day? And just like, it just fried his brain just because he forgot to stick a shower well, cap that's the on. Thing, right? Like, <laughs> if, if like you've had like surgery or like certain things like done to your like throat or something or like your head you obviously have to cover it right hmm. so that is true what does he do when he goes in the shower he's like i bet you, that's the thing he just has like a shower cap on <laughs> wouldn't look as cool though would it <laughs> just uh, with like a fucking loofah under his arm the shower right. cap. or is it similar to like when they put like a scopolamine patch behind your your ear does he also have to wear like a patch <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're doing that thing you do, Don. 
He's like, you did. You fill in in the gaps for him. I can't help it. <laughs> don't help him out. They don't deserve it. Well, this is what I don't get right because. See, that's the, thing, the coolest if, amount of editing they have in the entire film. You notice that? Yeah, that's what, what was happens that about? when you get a sculptor to direct a film, though. <laughs> What I don't get right is like, it's like, oh, we can't get it out without doing all this, you know, which might kill you. I'm like, well, it's just a hard drive, right? If you can put one in someone's fucking skull, surely there's a way of removing it without that much hassle. Well, that's what I mean. He can't, he can't be plugged in again, and they can't extract it. I mean, I don't know if it's got something to do with the fact that he's like overloaded it or something. Right. But again, like somehow with magical future tech, you can put twice as much data in a storage device and it's actually designed to hold. Like I said, just put it in a zip file. You should put it in a spare toaster slot on top of his head. <laughs> It'd be great if you just had all different ports in his head. Like like an SD card up his nose or something right. like that. Right. Three and a half inch floppy. Like, in his ass crack. <laughs> just, right, right. <laughs> five and a quarter inch. Just... <laughs> just <laughs> It's just like he just he takes his shirt off and he's just covered in USB ports or right. something. You tell him, Keanu, you 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 read that line off that card. And he's dramatically <laughs> trying to get <laughs> don't finish my sentence. Oh, lazy. <laughs> I want to know how they directed him in this. I like the little uh, the shepherd's cane. <laughs> Behold your savior. And like, this is kind of like, you know, they could have finished him off here. I mean, I know he's like super augmented in the ship. There's three of them. Mm -hmm. Jane's pretty badass. Just, just stab him in the head. Poor Henry. See, that clock's broken. <laughs> come to Jesus I always wondered like you know I know you've got to keep your surgical instruments clean but why is it in films you always thought they're chrome plated <laughs> like the shiniest <laughs> things ever poor Henry so it's too late now just just fucking leave him See, I do feel this is kind of like, well, it was a little bit before, but I feel this is where like, the, the film kind of loses steam. Well, also, what was the um, what was the point of, like, the whole scene where he's yelling up at them and, like, that they don't, they can't hear him? Yeah. And then the, it's like the cars are falling. <laughs> the yeah, like, which would which imply that that's what some kind of, defense mechanism right. dropping exploding cars on right. people and what i don't quite get and i can't again there's, there might be some reference to it in the story and so if i'm wrong then someone in the comments who's read it can quite happily point it out to me but i don't quite understand why the low techs are as low tech as they are and what i mean by that is why have they got like fucking crossbows just have gu why don't they have guns mm. uh Christ. Everything's busted up and rusted and shit. Because future. Is that a matte painting? Yes, definitely. Can't tell because it's not the best copy we've got here. Just can't tell if it's just like shitty resolution. I think this is supposed to be a comedy bit. I know that guy's on something on the left. I've seen him. He's like a that guy. Actor. I should have played like a henchman or some shit. <laughs> Getting, yeah, what's with the crossbows? Are you going to kill from there with a crossbow? That's another point as well. Doesn't seem that practical. My you mean to tell me they're, they haven't acquired any guns at this point? None of them. What, What the low techs? Yeah. Well, again, I just don't see all the bet. Who's going to hack your gun? You know what I mean, I understand like you want to stay off the grid. See, you know, it's just started adding a bit of look, make him look a bit tired. I know, just put it. a little... 
pink eye shadow. <laughs> yeah. It kind of looks a bit comedy though, doesn't it? On the it? lower lid. Oh, TMI with a lovely, lovely hair. <laughs> a hardcore crush on TMI when I was like uh, in my mid teens. Can't say that I did. Well, you know, nobody's perfect. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, he's. Oh my god, it's gonna piss me right off. I should have done my research. I should have. I should have checked on IMDb or had a cheeky little check and been really unprofessional while we're on air. I just don't. I mean, I see the benefit in terms of like building something on a bridge because you, you know, tactical standpoint and all that. But that just looks really unsafe. It's just like if you've just chained a bit of scrap together. Sure, but why not build it on top of the bridge? Why under the bridge? Yeah. Is the support system better under oh, yeah, there? Because it doesn't really well, seem like it is. We're getting to structural engineering now. I know. Yeah. Why not, not one of the exploding car traps? <laughs> you just explode as soon as it, like... I mean, the thing is, wouldn't that only work... It's not that much of an effective defense. It's only work if you were literally directly below it. And, yeah, yeah, because if you saw it coming, yeah. you'd move out of the way it just seems to be not the most practical just drop a brick on the head you mean to tell me after that they didn't see anything no. yeah, this is a bizarre rant the whole I want a grub sandwich this, this just kind of seems a bit out of place I think this rant with his character, because he doesn't really, well, up until this point, he doesn't really have one, or many wants or needs. His entire thing is like, I've got to get this data from point A to point B, and I want to get it out of my head and get also, paid. Also, he hasn't really, he doesn't have to do much. Everybody else has been doing a lot more than mm. he has. That's the thing, kind of, Johnny seems like a bit of a whiny bitch, doesn't he? Because, like, you know, do you know that Jamie be fucked? And it's like, mate, at the end of the day, you know, you chose to do this. Well, it's a club sandwich. Just give the man the club sandwich. <laughs> Gosh, shit. 80s and 90s thing as well, wasn't it? It's like, oh, yeah, you know you've made it if you can get room service in the hotel. That's like, that's you pimping. Like, oh, I'm just going to chill and get room service. Well, anyone who's been in most of the sort of budget hotels in this country, I want room service. I want to get it. Toasted cheese sandwich at 2 a.m. and pay 17 quid for it. Basically, just, I always thought this was like tantamount to him just throwing a big childlike strop. It's like, it's no fair. Yeah, I mean, this is like the only point in the movie where his suit gets damaged and he gets a little bit of blood on his head. Yeah. And then, you know, at the beginning of the film where his nose bled a little bit, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which didn't occur since. Yeah, why didn't he do some Tai Chi right now? Yeah, yeah, to... why well, didn't he do Tai Chi, bro? What happened to your man of Tai Chi, bro? <laughs> you you haven't seen that, have you? Yeah, don't bother. <laughs> it's not a particularly good film. Still kind of want to watch 47 Ronin at some point. <laughs> just out of morbid curiosity. <laughs> Stop. Right. Just... Can you imagine if I used to Show me Jones. If you saw this, like, I'm going to kick his ass. Who's that piece of shit? That would be rather surprising. <laughs> Ice T, <laughs> subscribe to you. I'm going to find out where you live. I'm going to kick you. I'm going to get Coco kick your fucking ass. <laughs> oh, oh my God. It's another data headache. Do you know what I'd love to see? Him having one of those weird head spazzers and, and Jane at the same time having one of her flop everywhere things <laughs> <laughs> both useless they just push him off the bridge the first it's like first day of interpretive dance school <laughs> I, don't know, I just I feel kind of nervous living up there I, I always feel I mean don't know I love the imagination of all this stuff but you think realistically who'd live here because it just looks like I don't know, it's the sort of thing like, you know, if you just were half awake and you woke up, go and get yourself a cup of tea. You'd probably like fall through the fucking bottom or something. They probably don't even have tea. 
They got ice tea. <laughs> <Ice tea. laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't. Oh, I can't believe I walked into that one. Water tea. <laughs> Water tea. <laughs> Yeah, they drink some of that water that that dolphin is in. <laughs> Which, and what I love, too, about the well, dolphin... It's just a guy in a zip line because... Yeah, yeah. Sorry. But I like that, you know, the dolphin never surfaces for any air yeah. whatsoever. It's like because he's got... He's and has lived that long stationary yeah. in a tank barely yeah. big enough to hold He's him. got a cybernetic blowhole. <laughs> No offense, your childhood looks pretty shit, mate. I wasn't really like, oh no, I, I remember having a cake once and a tricycle. <laughs> Need those memories back. Fucking, I can't remember most of my childhood. It looked like he was in boarding school. So what's mm. pleasant about that? <laughs> it just goes, takes a really dark turn. <laughs> <laughs> it just just finds out that actually, like, you went to like some boarding school. And it just something horrific happened to him as a child, and that's why he chose to be a courier. It's a really bleak ending. Yeah. I remember everything. Oh, I remember everything. Oh, it's just him <laughs> sat looking depressed in the corner. Oh, uh, forced romance. Yum. Mm. Got splinters in the mouth, Mark. Wooden acting. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I wish I, I wish I had Jones. I wish I had that prop. <laughs> I genuinely kind of want it though. No, but I think like it, well, I it think was it up looks for cool. auction in 2015. <laughs> yeah. Oh, if only I had my eyes open four years ago and had the money to spend on an outlandish <laughs> fucking dolphin prop. How much do you think that something like that went for? I mean, realistically speaking, well, it's one of those things, isn't it? It's kind of worth how much someone would pay for it. You know, it's like a collector's thing because I like, sure. Obviously, John Mnemonic, not the most... I mean, it's got a solid um, cult following, but it's not, like, you know, the most popular film. Yay, giant wall of CRT monitors. Because, you know, you need that many, just in case, what, you're 20 foot tall? Yeah. Nah, the thing is, I'm taking the piss, right? But I just think that looks cool. I love that shit. It's good to know that, you know... 20 plus years or into the future they thought yeah we're still gonna have tvs like that <laughs> <laughs> then again though you they're, could they're argue the the but low-tex. that's what i was gonna say that's what i was gonna say too like yeah. you know thing, you know you, you don't really see apart from the desktop stuff you know it's because yeah. you mean you could have like um you know some badass 80 inch 4k telly in his right. swiss japanese office <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. I think that looks cool. <laughs> it's fish. I'd like. I kind of imagine that all these the noises the dolphins making it. It's like R two D two when you just imagine that it's just a gigantic torrent of curse words. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's just basically called. Just, I wonder. Just something really offensive. I wonder if they blew the that. the budget all on that uh, dolphin. What? <laughs> No. Well, they work backwards. Like I've got a really clear vision about Jones. No, but <laughs> look at it. That's the most detailed thing I've yeah, seen. I thought, joke aside, I think it was fucking cool. Man. Like that whole set, like that whole area, like the tank, the dolphin, like all the little, you know, uh, puppetry animatronics. It's like, yeah. well, no, well, it must have cost a bit. Yeah, <laughs> like, I spent twenty million on that. <laughs> twenty million on the dolphin. <laughs> See, I don't get this right. Because now they're all in sort of combat gear. Is that because they're su- supposed to be... Is it just because, like, hey, we're going to assault that thing, so we need, like, you know, armor and shit? Or are they actually supposed to be masquerading as police? Or they bought the uh, the police force. You know yeah, what I mean? The, yeah, well, that's the, yeah, that's the dude, though, isn't it? Oh, no, see, you mean, see what you mean, yeah. Yeah. But then you got, like... Like, they're there. all in... They're all in cahoots. But again, you don't know enough about the universe. That's right. the problem. What is the state of the police? Like, you know, 
are they privatized? Right. Are they not privatized, but they're kind of corrupt? What? Also, what I think is kind of weird, like, initially, like, one of the scenes, there's just, like, random people walking around with, like, bags and stuff. Like, you know, like, they aren't in a dystopic future, you know, just going yeah. about their business. Because, well, yeah, you've got the free city of Newark, right? And it's one of those things where, hey, it's free. Is it implied that it, it's a free city? It's outside of corporate control. Right. And because it's outside of corporate control, it's got no corporate money. So, therefore, it's free, but it's poverty stricken and destitute and you know because parts of it don't look like bad but you know or i should say they don't look uh that bad this i mean this area looks like really bad it, again it's the problem they don't really take the time to set up the world in terms of any kind of explanation <laughs> the scene. Like, like a fucking bad bond movie <laughs> All the wires. Let's take an old biker helmet <laughs> and then add some straps, glue some wires to it. See, that's the thing. I'd love to see how they construct something like that. Like, oh, do you think this has got enough cables coming out of it? Yeah. <laughs> they should just, like, glue a bit more plate metal onto it. Does it look cyber enough? You know? Does this look potentially cyber enough? See, I don't understand why he turns up to the things. Right. I always... I always imagined Takeshi Miki's character is just like, you know, being the guy sat in the office. I don't understand why he turns up there himself. Right. It's like, again, like Cinefix said in that video they had, it's like putting a hat on a hat on a hat. Like, you don't... You still could have had him as a villain, but not in a kind of facey-off way. You could have right. just had him like, you know, He's in his employer. ivory tower. Yeah. He doesn't have to go anywhere. Yeah. Oh, the old... We head off. The, the only cool sci-fi weapon in the <laughs> game, the game, in the film. What the fuck am I talking about? Now that's yeah. a weird little scene. Yeah. He throws the knife and it lingers. Yeah. Look, look yeah. At, and he lo and he looks and then he just walks away. The thing is, it's actually pretty tricky to kill a guy with a throw knife instantly. Yeah. Because you'd have to hit them to where I mean, to, to kill someone instantly with a knife because. You'd have to sort of make sure if you threw it in the chest, you have to not bounce off the ribs or Yeah, like I mean, it's pretty hard to get enough. through that, you know? You'd have to be pretty lucky. And again, what, what's that about? Aren't, aren't your mates on there? You start <laughs> fucking, like, suddenly go mental and start firing fucking missiles at them. Oh, he's hacking his own brain. What's she shooting at? The fuck? So now what, you're not asked about retrieving the data? Like, I does it make any sense? I didn't get the data. Oh. <laughs> <I gotta laughs> like, the line of the movie right there. <laughs> and we left to hack your own brain. I just wonder if in real life, you know, when no one's looking, Ice T is like, hello. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Icewood T. And he instantly knows where she is as well. <laughs> and and shoots her through the mouth. From that distance. <laughs> that's the like, best. Like, that's, oh my like, god. Like, it's, it's, I, I swear to god they've cut a load of this stuff out. As if like, she didn't. She just looked up and go, whoa. And whoa? then. Yeah. Boom. Again, why was she firing He might as anyway? well just drop the arrow. Yeah. You could be just like hoid a fucking break <laughs> up the end, right. and you just had an accompanying funny sound for like dunk. There he is. Uh. What was that weird little move she just did then before she rolled away? Right. This I don't know. I'm pretty. Sure, I reckon the original cut of this was like three hours long. <laughs> It's just like, you know, <laughs> mostly garbage. What's that as well? It's just like a hold your gun and sword point. My three fifty seven Magnum wasn't intimidating enough. I also have a Wakazashi. Because I'm Japanese and stuff, remember? <laughs> Bit late for exposition, isn't it? I know. Do you know who this man is? Mm -hmm. 
Seriously, I mean, this is what I mean. This this third act seems like a complete fuck. It's like it's like you know it is like, like they wrote like two thirds of the script, and then started shooting it before they'd even thought right. of the last act. I'm like, oh fuck, how are we gonna are we gonna wrap all this up? Just a bit. I don't know. It just seems like a problem. I say it seems like a mess. There's gonna be loads of people just saying to me, the whole thing's a fucking mess. What are you on about, dude? And he shot him because. Would you say that this is worse than the uh, Mario Brothers film, live action film? Ooh. Because at least that one's a bit more fun. You know? I. Well, that's a, that's a tough one, that. I just, I, I just, I mean, to me, you can make the argument with this to me is I just kind of think it's generally kind of boring. You know, I don't think it's not offensively bad. This yeah. film, I, I don't. This, I've seen more films where I've gone, that doesn't make sense. What the fuck's going on there? That's you know, I'm not offended by it. It's just, eh. I mean, I don't know. What do you, what do you think? I mean. I, I, I certainly don't think it's as bad as it got made out to be, but that is by no means me saying I think it's great and, hey, you know, what are you doing today, man? You got a loose end? Oh, yeah, should we stick Johnny Mnemonic on? I mean, if they yeah. were going to, like, make this movie with a lower budget, I definitely think that they could have cut a lot of the characters and just, like like you said, make it, like, a decent chase film. It just definitely seems like they Make didn't exactly know what they wanted to do with it. A little, like, eh. a little grittier. And I don't even think the dolphin would have been the most extreme thing anyway. Because look, I mean, didn't they find a, a real life beluga whale with a harness, like a Russian harness on it? Like, oh, yeah, but again, like, Norway. Also, like, <laughs> so you, clearly, I mean. <laughs> when you Yanks try to train, do- train dolphins to plant <laughs> mines on subs anyway? Yeah. Oh. Or some shit like that. Or even, I heard something else about, like, you know, or literally putting mines on dolphins and training them to, like, swim up to... I mean, I'm sure we've up. done, like, every single thing. It's like you train dogs, pigeons, bats, anything yeah. you can think of. It's like, you know... I love reading about that. The absolute maddest tit sort of, like, <laughs> yeah. weapon ideas. Yeah. So, no, but you, you have a real-life <laughs> Jones, a real-life <laughs> beluga whale. Reach, with reach for his coke spoon nail. <laughs> and there's a lot of decapitation specifically going on with this. Like, yeah. How did he do that? Because he had to like whip it round. Like, wh- yeah. why not just cut his arm off or some shit, right. or like just right. cut him in half? It's like yeah, no. that would have been much easier. But then he would have survived. Must not really. Not yeah, from that yeah, height. yeah. No, I know, I know, I know, I know. Decapitate him. You didn't. <laughs> how do you hold on with one arm like that, and you're not tired, and your brain is spazzing? <laughs> be- be- because plot armor. And then he's just teleported on. This is what I mean. <laughs> it's just like again. He's Jesus. Like, he the can't... editing's so bad. It's just come to Jesus, which it, it just doesn't make any sense. It, yeah, this, they, they definitely like, chopped some shit out of this because he is just again. You don't even see a street preacher approaching it, and how do you know they're there? Yeah, and because, how did he get up there? Well, yeah, did he walk all the way around to the end of the bridge well, and then he climbed down? Well, at least when he, he tracked Rollins down, um, you know, he got the information from the bartender. Right. How do you know they were there? Yeah. Unless yeah. they they the elevator's been lowered this whole time and then somehow they got on there. <laughs> he's climbed climbed up the cable because he's got yeah. super orgs. Yeah, exactly. And then, like music sting and what the Or fuck? maybe he has springy legs. Who yeah. knows? He does like pinning people to things. Is it some supposed to be some kind of weird crucifixion thing? <laughs> yeah. Like just as just as well, you've got these nails that you're carrying around, so I can use for a handy metaphor. <laughs> you got to love like when Dolph Lundgren just goes, every time he hits someone. Some choice facial expressions there, Keanu. <laughs> Ninja pose. So, I like how the augments are just like a few little dots, like yeah. little circles. Like, let's just glue some, you this know, washers to your arm. But then you never actually see what the augments do. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is the yeah. best part. <laughs> Get fried by a dolphin. <laughs> see, see, look at those visible sound waves. Right. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, some superior camera work there. What? What? Oh, oh no! My body's exploding with jam. <laughs> <laughs> Just be commenting on this, but it's too funny. It's like, oh, just favor, mate. Pass that other cable. There you go. Oh, yeah, hold that, on wait, to oh, that. Oh, oh, yeah. No. And you get, uh, again. Uh, yeah. What was the point of that? And why was he stuck to the cable? Well, he was he's he holding on. To right. It, and then he's just like, hey, catch this. All right then. Again, I, it's just, I just genuinely don't think there's any need for his character whatsoever. Right. Especially when you know he doesn't exist in the original text. Right. Why? Why? I mean, it just See, seems so completely redundant. Again, I wouldn't mind if there was like a whole cult, like weird sort of cult around. I would think know, how he's introduced. He just gets from like just snaps to a scene. He's just yeah. there in his church. <laughs> just it doesn't make sense. So, yeah, I do think this fucking drags on this last fucking act. Christ. Yeah, and it's like we have to kill literally everybody before we have to take Get the out all the up. Yeah. Old school knobs and numbers and stuff. <laughs> I still got a hacker's own brain. If you notice, that's like an electric chair. chair yeah, yeah, well. no, I know. Huh. It is, isn't it? That's like. Yeah. Electric chair chair. Get it? Because it's low tech. It's low tech, but it's got like, it looks edgy. And just in only ten was it ten years later? Was it, when's Constantine come out? Two thousand five. Mm-hmm. Didn't he, that's, that's two films where Keanu Reeves is sat in an electric chair as well. <laughs> <laughs> when he has to yeah. like, oh dear me, that's a very flawed. That's another example of like that film where they've taken a few stories from like a comic series and just gone instead of just following one, trying to make an adaptation there. Let's take bits from like three different story arcs and just jam them in one. I mean, but again, see the terribleness of Johnny Mnemonic is making me think of a different Keanu John film. Not that Constantine's any better either. <laughs> it's got Gavin Rossdale in it, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Fire! I was bored of this! <laughs> I actually did like him in that film. Oh, you fucking would. <laughs> Christ. You ready? You have to lawn mow a man your brain, Johnny. So I bet you anything, like, they, they spend the most money on the dolphin and all the computer <laughs> sequences. Because it was super high tech for the time. Dolphin's best actor in this. Yeah. <laughs> Aw. Oh, no. It's... no uh... Hey, there you go. Full iced tea. I'm going out with a bang, baby. It's your time to shine, Ice. <laughs> and yes, like shakes, baby. <laughs> Textile. I feel he's probably got a, a larger part than he should have had. So, yeah, isn't the film he's supposed to have like dog teeth and like covered <laughs> in like right. sc- like. Scratch like scars and shit. See, here's the thing. The other thing, like, we don't really know about is how they distribute drugs in this universe. Like, well, you don't really, that's the prescription. You know a bit or, how shit looks, yeah. but you don't know anything about how the universe operates whatsoever. You right. just know there are corporations. There's a few buildings. Yeah. There's some people. There's some garbage over there. Yeah. So, I, like Henry the, Rollins. I like his uh, high top. He's got going on in the digital world. He's got, uh, what? It's real nice. It's actually... Isn't it Kid? Uh, Kid and Play? Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) With the um, high hair. Keanu, Kid, Keanu's house party. (laughs) (laughs) Like, even though this is supposed to be 95, I like that it has, like, 80s graphic design sensibilities. Uh, Late 80s, very early (laughs) 90s. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's what Lawnmower Man did as well, don't yeah. it? Yeah. We'll probably have to fucking do that at some point, won't we? It looks just like Reboot. Yeah, well, you you seriously want to do Reboot, don't you? I love that series. Yeah, but you, I don't, I don't, there you go. Answer <laughs> in the comments. <laughs> so, 
If anyone interested in us covering some episodes from Reboot, if you want to stay friends with me, say no. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it was all right for what it was, but I don't see how we're going to get through. How many, it was like five seasons or something? Six seasons? Yeah, I mean, it went on for a bit. Yeah, I just... That's how you hack your own brain. You pull a weird sort of image from another image. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just... I don't, how does anything work? <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> how do you interface like that? Also, I know the dolphin is helping him and stuff, but like really he's just swimming around. He's just He's, he's like, here, go he's there. He's there for moral support. There, yeah. Sit it out! <laughs> Whatever you do, Ice. So, don't be don't be understated. So technically, Jones is the hero of this story. Yeah, well, that's, that's Flipper we saves the day. Cyber Flipper. Yeah. Oh my God! Right, I'm going to write that script. <laughs> Flipper twenty forty seven. <laughs> <laughs> they technically made that already with Echo. <laughs> it's, it's a video game, and also Echo didn't have any sick cyber implants. No, he just had. Uh, what did he have? Telepathy and some stars on his forehead? Flipper spelled <laughs> backwards F L <laughs> 1 P P 3 <laughs> and 2 R's. For some reason, they're both capitals. 2047. <laughs> One dolphin's got to save the, the, the ocean mega net thing <laughs> by. I don't know. I haven't thought it through. Also, why should the dolphin even care if he's been abused by humans? That's the real question. That's the point. It's like, what's in it for me? At least in the book, he's a drug addict. Could have right. got, got like he could have thrown a couple of rocks of crack in there. <laughs> right. Or that water is completely laced with drugs, so he doesn't know the difference. Just off his tits. <laughs> Thinks he's in the ocean. <laughs> Basically, this is, this is really just an unethical film about right, animal right. abuse. Right. It just looks sinister. It's not supposed to be his mother. Right. It's like he's just been abducted. Oh, great. Seven-year-old Johnny. Yeah. All that shit for about three seconds of your seventh birthday party. Right. Oh, that was worth it, mate. Did that thing style his hair? <laughs> So you go into a hairdresser's, it's per- the, the blow dryer. It's perfectly quaffed. <laughs> so it's just a hairdryer. <laughs> I'm pretty sure his hair is st- <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not bleeding from the hand. See, I don't know. Yeah, Johnny's just kind of a bit of a punk, really, isn't he? I don't really feel he's done anything. He's just kind of walked around a bit, got people killed and bitched. Right. And again, yeah, explain this to me. What the fuck is that on fire? The Pharmacon building, what? Like, you hack it and it spontaneously combusts? Or somebody had secret explosives planted what, like, all over. pretty much the instant the... they hacked into it. Right. And what's that supposed to be? And I don't understand the point of this fake out as well. Because I just, I, I, if I was going to do that, I would have had it so he came back. Right. I just don't understand, like, ooh. Just garbage. <laughs> <laughs> like, what, what was that for? Were we supposed to really think, like, ooh. We need to see his body get dumped in the water as well. Yeah, that's, what is the need that's for Im- that? That's important. Like, you need reason. to see every little bit that happens. I just, what, what, here's the thing. Cause obviously, like, they obviously shot way more footage, which was just terrible. And then that's Ugh, the end. It's a like fade that to black. Like slow-mo. Directed by Robert Longo. Wow, you fucking learned his lesson after this. <laughs> poor, poor Willie Gibson. Oh fucking goodness. dude deserved a better adaptation of his work. Oh, well, credit time. No, it's a, that's a brilliant film. <laughs> <laughs> he said that with such conviction. Uh, it deserves an Oscar. I, I believed you. I hardcore believed you. <laughs> Jesus wept. <laughs> Probably the only good thing about this film is the uh, the music at the end. It's not saying much. <laughs> it really isn't. Oh. Ah, well, I, 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 it's good as place of Zenny. Oh, it was just known as Takeshi there. Oh, I can go on monogramic. Ice tea. 
But um, Dina May deserved better than this. Well, <laughs> even Udo Kia deserved better than this at the time in the mid nineties. But um, yeah, no, I thought it was as good a place as any to to start because it is. Even though it's not a great film, since the entire point of us doing this channel is to go through different cyberpunk things and like introduce people who might not have seen things, seen certain things like this. I mean, fucking hell, Brad Fidel did this. Brad Fidel did it. Brad Fidel, composer of Terminator, the Terminator, <laughs> I should say, and Terminator 2, did the. Oh, Jesus fuck. It's just a. This film's just letting everyone down, isn't it? But, um, yeah, so I think it's as good as film to start as any because despite its flaws, it is undeniably a cyberpunk film based on a cyberpunk short story written by the godfather of cyberpunk. So in terms of thematically, I'm I'm trying my best. Feel free to chip in and support me on this one. It's anytime no, you want. it's it's really hard because it. I do want to say it's hey, just basically Sid Mead, visual consultant. Oh Jesus! Uh, Sorry. Looks like they didn't take Sid any Mead, of his. Uh, one, of my consulting. Fa- one of my favorite artists of all time. Ever. No, I, I was just gonna say that it's it's very hard to say something nice about it because I really just want to say it's a dumpster fire. <laughs> It is, but then again, in my like I said earlier, in my slight, it's I don't think it's it's a bad film. It is a bad film. However, I don't think it's as awful as it gets made out to be. No, I I think that there are parts of it that like you could see that they were trying to be a bit more stylish, and I think that they should have ran with that a little bit more and definitely cut out way more characters. Well, it's it's one of those on the one hand I'd say is it because of studio interference <laughs> oh, Tim Miller oh, right. is that the Tim Miller probably not <laughs> on, the, Tim on the other hand I'd say well if you left Robert Longo to it he wasn't an experienced filmmaker so who's to say that? okay it might be more artistic in its vision mm. but as a film I wouldn't have that much confidence that it would hold up narratively or structure wise you know so uh, but to be fair it, it's got it's it's got bits in it that I think are well done. The effects are pretty decent. The sets are well designed. The costumes are well done. The aesthetics are good. There's a couple of half decent performances in it. The mm. dolphin looks good. <laughs> Jones looks good. <laughs> the dolphin. <laughs> the dolphin best, steals uh. the show. <laughs> but um, no, but it's I don't know. Okay, not that I like doing this because I don't like doing this because I, I think yeah, it's a strips things out too simply but if you had to give this a mark out of 10 what oh, would you give god. it oh god i think for i know me, what i'd give it it for me it's going like four or five i was gonna say four yeah because i i do think it's i don't think it's awful but it is less than good <laughs> 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 that's my incredibly informed academic viewpoint on it what we got? Oh, KM, FEM. Oh, I'm just looking at the music now. Ah, I thought it was a Rollins band. Orbital as well. Fucking Orbital in it. And Bono and The Edge. <laughs> fucking Bono. Fucking, fucking, they filmed fucking in, yeah, Bono. see, they filmed in Toronto and Yeah, of course they did. <laughs> oh, Demon City Shinjuku. Have you seen that? Demon no, City. I have not. I've seen bits of it. It's, it's interesting. Anyway. Right, well, we are coming to the end of our very first uh, film commentary for The Countdown to Cyberpunk from Transatlantic. Um, I hope you've managed to stick through this with us and it hasn't been too bad for you. And hopefully not kill yourself while (laughs) watching this film. (laughs) We promise part two in the Keanu trilogy coming up next week will be a far more broadly critically lauded film than Giant Mnemonic Promise uh, not going to give you any hints to what it is yet but anyway yeah. Um, thanks for watching uh, in the meantime I am Kindred and I'm Juju and we'll see you next time, stay connected bye bye support the cyber revolution and look great while doing it by checking out our Redbubble shop down in the description.